So anyways, I just want to recap briefly. I've explained I got on the bus, proved to the driver that my cigarette was not lit in my mouth, and he further demanded, after three times, for me to remove it, continually demanding as I'm leaving him, asking him nicely to please don't move the bus until I sit down. I found a seat and I sat down. Now, he refused to move the bus for about two minutes until, listen, some, uh, some, some black gentleman, uh, I don't mean to get, uh, in, in, uh, politically correct in any way, shape or form, okay? Please. All right, now, he demanded that I remove my cigarette from my mouth, to which I objected and said, wait a minute, it's, I'm right, he's wrong. No. Doesn't that count for something? I'm an honest person. I treat everybody with respect and courtesy. And that's what I do. I really do. And, and I got proof and people will attest to that. And you said you refused to move the bus until you took it out of your mouth? That's, no, I said he kept demanding that I remove the cigarette. I got that. And when I sat down, when I found a seat and sat down, he refused to move the bus for two minutes. Get that. That's very important. I got it on tape now. Um, okay, well, now listen, let me finish my story. Um, after some moments go by, this other gentleman who I described under the window, did you hear that part? Mm -hmm. Because I just heard it too. All right? mm -hmm. He demanded I take it out. Okay, so another person demanded I yeah. take it out? Yeah, that's right. Was he part of SDA or was he a No, he was, he was a passenger. He was a passenger? Uh, to which I said, well, listen, I'm right, and he's wrong. I'm doing nothing wrong. I prefer to have a cigarette in my mouth because I'm a habitual smoker, and that's why I like it. Now, um, at, listen, at that point, I felt there was going to be uh, some tension, unwarranted tension directed to me, and I felt threatened and in danger, actually. You want to get technical, all right? Now, um, I... Fearfully removed the damn cigarette and put it in my pocket, in my cigarette package. And this fellow backs a lot, this second guy. But not before giving me some menacing uh, expressions, which I didn't appreciate. But I didn't show any sort of uh, anything other than positive energy as much as I could muster. Now, I'm a hardworking, I pay my my taxes. I live in a nice place. I'm well respected. I'm an international artist. People don't know that. I don't like to share it. But I'm hugely successful in many different ways. And I treat people with respect. That's the most important thing. Most important. Always courteous and always kind to people. And, and I might say charitable, too. This guy had no right to demand that I take the cigarette out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. In fact, in fact, when I got off the bus, I politely, politely approached him with all the politeness I could muster and engaged him in a polite conversation, this driver, who caused me massive consternation. That guy. I engaged him in a polite conversation and requested that he, you're not writing this down anymore. So you're going to trust this, apparently. That's fine. Now, listen. When I engaged him in this polite conversation, he agreed to put forth his belief that it's the policy that enables him to, per his judgment only, per his judgment only, to demand for me to remove an unlit cigarette from my mouth. He said there's a policy on it. And that was his interpretation of policy. That's what he told me. This guy that caused me, like I said, undue attention in, in the area I was seated. You understand, correct? You got all this, right? You're listening, right? You understand what I've been talking about, right? Yeah. Good. Now, he couldn't find it. He offered to get up and find it. And he, he reached to a shelf of pamphlets. And after a, a minute or so, he said, well, I can't find it. 
I said, that's okay, no problem. Can you please just tell me where I can find it? And uh, I, I didn't want to take of his break time. I even told him that. I said, listen, man, I don't mean to take away this time. I don't time's important to you, too. But he said, okay. And he gets on the phone. That's right, he got on the phone. And he spoke to somebody, somebody. And at some point during that conversation, he uttered the following phrase. This is what he said. This is what I overheard him saying on the phone. He said this. You mean we can't tell them to take an unlit cigarette out of their mouth? That's verbatim what he said. Get that quote, please. <laughs> I got it. Oh, by the way, I filmed that, too. That's on tape, too. <laughs> So, uh, let me see, what else? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, then he apologized to me and uh, said that he was sorry. Well, sorry doesn't cut it sometimes, you know, especially when you're threatened and uh, made you look like some kind of pariah or something. I'm not talking about him. He's not a film. The other guy. That's on film, too. Find it, please. I'm going to subpoena those films. Uh, oddly, oddly, listen. Oddly, your company, STA, has a habit of losing my subpoena request. They've done it twice now. But isn't that funny? That's hilarious. Please don't lose this one. What? I'm done. These people are in a hurry. Come on. What? Whatever time I was on a stamp. Here. Oh, jeez. 